Okay, we're recording, finally. This is for the, this is the patrons and uh, the prize draw. Pro- apologies, it's taken a while. Uh, main reason being my admin's been up my backside and I ended up uh, going into full-blown last minute change the studio around which is what's happening now um yeah it's it's in progress at the minute but essentially making uh, making it more more um visually or aesthetically uh pleasing should we say or acceptable on the eye for viewers basically so uh, a little i suppose a little insight is uh one one thing I've been trying to change. So, it, for, for when people are watching something, so when you are watching something, when I am watching something on TV, on YouTube, on flipping Vimeo, wherever, uh, the viewing experience can be less pleasurable or, uh, or more difficult to enjoy, or less uh, or less difficult to um, tolerate for any period of time if if the depth of field is not obvious. This is one little. It's a little. It's a little. Uh, productionism uh, if that's the word but yeah it's a depth of feels difficult to uh, to identify and it's something you wouldn't really perceive you don't sit there watching something dear and go can i see the depth of field here but if the depth of field is difficult to to cut to see it can make the viewing experience not as good as it could be and uh, it's one of the things i've struggled with in the studio um, because of the shape of it so i know some of you have been in the studio others haven't but the way i had the layout before with this wall behind me um the the camera angles and the wall and the way things are it was it was difficult to see um to to see the depth of field not depth of field to see yeah to see depth of field really um it's why sometimes or, or especially when i first had the studio i had like union jacks or drapes hanging down and it wasn't because oh let's get a union jack in it that was because it was trying to i was trying to get some uh depth of field to it um but anyway i've changed things around now I've, uh, there's a lot of change i mean if you could see the rest of the studio right now it's a fucking tip but like it's a tip there's shit everywhere pardon my language there's stuff everywhere uh yeah so i'm changing it around and i'm very happy with it at the moment very happy with it indeed because look look at all the depth of field look at it so much depth of field do you feel pleasured <laughs> anyway fucking hell right where are we that's one of the things going on uh Yeah, that's not the main, main reason. Main reason is my admin's been up my backside. Anyway, we have got four things to give away to eligible patrons. Eligible, meaning you haven't won something else recently on this. So we, I'm going to, uh, yeah, we've got a, so Chris Michaels, I'm sure Chris Michaels said he was a patron himself. He's also an author. He's also host of the Dark Side Insta podcast. He said he's going to um, give away two of his books. I'm sure, pretty sure he said two. So I've included two books on the um I'm pointing up there to a screen I'm looking at, the monitor I'm looking at. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Uh, uh, two of Chris Michaels' books. We've also got um, the Daily Stoic book, which is a a book of meditations from people like Marcus Aurelius and all of that. And the idea is, so you read a page a day of that book. Some of the, well, they're all just two paragraphs. It's one paragraph which will give, which will basically be quoting a, a meditation, a, a quote from some inspirational or, or um, uh, ancient philosopher, for example, or leader, for example. Most of them, are, well, a lot of them are from Marcus Aurelius. Uh, and yeah, you, you read one a day, and then the second paragraph on the same page is an, inter- is an interpretation or a comment on that from uh, from the author of the book. So I'll give you away a copy of that, Daily Stoic. And yeah, you read one page a day for a whole year and every page is different. Funny enough. Imagine that if every page was exactly the same for you, it'd be ridiculous, wouldn't it? So there was, yeah, obviously each page is different in that 365 page book. And then the last thing I've given away is the Mind Journal, which I we mentioned on the last Zoom call. So I, I got introduced to the Mind Journal from a, a lad called Ash Fletcher's X, uh, X6, 206, 206 uh, Parachute Signal Squadron. And um, it's it's like a it's a it's a journal that you it's pitched for men, right? It's pitched as a uh, a, a tool for men to I don't know just it's just a it's a mindfulness well being thing. I undertook it when uh, I was trying to improve myself for various reasons uh, because I wasn't where I wanted to be. Are, are any of us ever? Um, and. Uh, I was also using it as a way to try and focus myself every morning and focus on something and do something 
uh, productive for myself. So internally, you, know, you look inwardly when you do the book, and it, the book is uh, it's a journal. You fill it out. It, it literally tells you what to write and asks you questions each day. And it's got it's like a minimum of ninety days you do it for, and then there's some extra bits at the end you can do. Well, I I, I found it really good. I found it really good. Uh, and it's pitched to men, but I don't I, I wholeheartedly don't think it just can benefit men. We've got women who are patrons, so if any of you guys, um, we've got women who are patrons. If any of you guys win it, I use guys as a as an I use guys as a as a term which is not sex, not gender specific. So I apologize, ladies, if you get offended when I say guys. So if any of you guys, guys being all patrons, if any of you guys, and female patrons, if you <laughs> if you win the the Mind Journal, then give it a bash. Now I say it's I, it could be used by a woman. Like when you when you go through it, there's nothing sort of gender or yeah, there's nothing gender specific in there, as I recall. But with that said, the questions and the uh, and the the way it's constructed may w- are probably uh, built around the idea of uh, the male psyche. But if a lady happens to win it, if you happen to win it, then um, give it a bash. See what it's like. I, I, it's a very very useful tool. Very introspective. It asks some really interesting things, and gets got, it got me thinking about all sorts of things and got me revaluing certain things in my life. And certain relationships in my life and all sorts of things. Anyway, I'll stop fucking waffling. Now, where are we? I'm going to share the screen. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we got a spreadsheet of the eligible patrons. Is this going to work? Can you see that? Yes, you can. And uh, So you can still see me. I'm right there. I'm still here. Right, so, um, yeah, 40 of you eligible. There's the numbers. I'm going to really simply use uh, a random number generator from... This isn't the Google one. This is one from calculatorsoup.com. So, I'm going to pull this over so you can see it. Uno momento. Uh, There we go. Okay, so I'm going to say 1 to 40. 1 to 40, 1 to 40. Bollocks. Where's my mouse gone? 1 to 40... Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this three times, and this doesn't mean anything. I'm just gonna show you it's a random generate. No, not generate five numbers. We're gonna do one at a time. We do one at a time. Okay, so uh, now one number. There we go. One number. Yeah. Uh, we got, these first three times we're gonna do don't count. Just to show you, it's random. So uh, calculate. And that gave us 24. Next one's going to give us 17. Next one's going to give us 15. Okay. This is the next time. So this is for Chris Michaels, book number one. And this will be whatever book Chris Michaels descend, decides he's going to send you of his that he's authored. And I assume he will sign it for you. So, book number one. We got number 22. Who is number 22? Number 22. Imagine it was Chris Michaels. Imagine Chris Michaels won his own book. Right. So number 22 is... Matt Timblin, there you go, dude. And I will. Oh, Matt's on Twitter as well. I'll drop you. I, you may not watch this. I don't think he's. In, are you? Are you active in Discord, Matt? I can't remember. I think you are. Well, you're in there, but I don't think you're very active. I'll hit you on Twitter. There you go. Book one. So let's let's drop, let's uh, let's uh, mark it down. Timblin, Timblin, cool. Uh, are we gonna do this again? Okay. Book two from Chris Michaels. Bang. Is that number eight? Is number eight? No, I can't see that screen. Uh, number eight, Chris Goodale. Okay, Chris Goodale gets book two. The Daily Stoic book. Who's going to get this? Who is going to get this? Oh, if we have a random number, and it happens to be the same one twice, then we're not going to we're going to disregard that. So if Chris Goodale wins again in the next one, and it happens to throw up number eight again, which would be freaky, then it's not going to. We, we won't. We'll disregard it. Okay, next one. What was that? 33. 33 is that. Now, okay, you, Solly1234, AWD2, have won the. Um, not solid. I'll just make that note for a minute. I'm going to do the book. Okay, the Mind Journal next. The Mind Journal. 
good to go. This is ready. I ordered this in and it arrived. It took a while to arrive, actually. Got it in. Nice and wrapped. Perfect. Not even opened. I didn't need to open it to check and have a look myself. I've done one myself. It is, uh, it is ready to rock. Mind journal. Who's going to win this? Let's have a look. Number four. Who is number four? Alistair. Alistair wins number four. Doesn't win number four. He wins the mind journal. Perfect. Perfecto. That is that. Over and done with. Or is it over and done with? It is over and done with. Yeah, what have we got? Matt Timblin on Chris Michael's book one. Uh, um, Chris Goodale on book number two. Sorry, one, two, three, four. On Daily Stoic and Alistair in the mind journal. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Podcast to be a bit uh, less frequent over the last couple of months. I'm sure the keener eyed, keener eared of you have noticed. And that's because uh, I've got some um, a, a temporary change in personal circumstances at the minute, which just basically has given me not as much time. Um it has happened, but uh, it is what it is. But um, what it, what has happened as a result, a good result of it, is that uh, I've started back up the online uh, interviews again, um, and I don't I don't want to do a lot of them. I just prefer it to be in the studio. However, I have opened them back up again, and I've also I've now got a I've now got a hard line internet into the studio, so I can actually do the. Uh, I can actually do the online interviews from here, which I didn't have before. So I'm glad. I also do it from my home. Sometimes it depends on what the schedule is with the uh, with the Zoom with the Zoom interviews. If I do them by I do them by Zoom. It's a great tool to use for for interviews because uh, the way it switches cameras. Um, a lot of those people are probably going to be overseas, so different time zones and stuff. Probably I say, but some won't be. Anyway. That is it. Keep the guest recommendations coming in Discord. They are great. They are great. And uh, and uh, even with the ones I think, oh Christ, I'll never be able to get hold of them because they're, you know, they're, they're uh, well-known, popular. Time is limited. I, was, I will always, I will still try. Because if you recommend them, it means you want to hear them talk to me, which uh, which I am happy to oblige to do, especially as they're, they're always interesting suggestions. And that is it. That is it. Okay. Next month, oh, we need to come up with some uh, some gift ideas for next month. So, chuck them in the Discord. I wouldn't. I had a look on the DevSoc website today actually because I remember we were talking about DevSoc on the last Zoom call, and uh, they've only got one product at the moment, and that's their baseball caps. I bet they're all sold out. We can't do those at the moment, but we'll find something. Thank you for being patrons and. Uh, Enjoy the um, enjoy the prizes for those who won them. Also, don't forget that we got the the little uh, Discord group book sharing, little little bit of book sharing going on in the, in the Discord uh, recommended reading channel. Um, I'm trying to think. I have got some other, but a lot of the books I've got on my bookshelf are like war books, um, and half of them I haven't read. I don't. I, and. Uh, well, I'll offer them up if anyone wants them to, to, to read them. I'll, I'll share them about them. I'm just conscious people in the group, most people have probably read the ones that I've got on my, on my shelf. But uh, I did mention in the Discord, in the recommended reading earlier to Dave Davis this morning about a book called The 13th Valley by a guy called John Del Vecchio. Hands down, the greatest war book I've ever, ever read and needs to be made into a film. The book was written in the 80s, I think. Yeah, I think it was written in the 80s. And John, Del, I, I've, I have talked about this in the podcast a few times, but John Del Vecchio was a combat correspondent. He was a war correspondent. And he went out to Vietnam like five or six times. And he went out there with different units um, at different times throughout the Vietnamese, th throughout the Vietnam War, and served with different units. And the book is, it's, it's a fictional main plot about a, a battalion of 101st Airborne called the 50 Juice, the 502nd, the 50 Juice, and a battalion of the 500 uh, of the 101st Airborne, and they get intelligence. They get put onto an op into a valley where there's intelligence that says there's an NVA headquarters headquarters in there, headquartered there, and the, a, a company of the the 
the battalion is tasked to go into the jungle floor and the other companies uh, on the high ground in the valley on the, on the valley sides provide an overwatch you know bog standard uh, tactics and it's and it's called the 13th valley because it's the Katar Lao valley and it's the 13th in a row of valleys going along it's the 13th valley along I won't go I won't give any spoilers away right but uh, the 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 plot, the story, the book mainly follows the company in, on the jungle floor who are going through uh, uh, trying to find this uh, MVA headquarters there. Uh, and as you know, you know you, a lot of uh, tunnel systems and stuff in the Vietnam War, the, the Viet Cong were very good at that. And uh, and um, the characters that John Del Vecchio brings out in the book, uh, who are mainly in this company on the, on the jungle floor, are just incredible characters. And all of the sub-stories, the little things that happen, the little contacts, you had little conversations, the the sort of inter-platoon relationship breakdowns, and then and uh, all those little sort of worry, like little stories, the, the, the subplots and that sort of give the 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 quality to the overall story uh almost all of those things that john de Vecchio writes in there and happens to you know section commanders and platoons and sections and stuff uh, even from when they're back in camp before they deploy on the ground or when they're when they're bcr and out battlefield casualty res- reserves coming in and stuff uh they're all things that happened so what john del Vecchio has done is all these little stories and these experiences that he picked up and saw and even was part of on his time when he deployed on a different um, operations when he was uh, as a, a correspondent out with uh, the different units, not just 101st, but different units of Vietnam War. He's brought all those actual real experiences and, and events that happened, the small stories that happened, people getting killed, blown up, people scrapping, weed smoking, you know, s- uh, conversations in your basha about back home and politics and all of that he brings them all together and they and, and the real stories are what make the overall main plot which is fictional real it is an incredible book incredible book you never used to be able to buy it in the uk um and you i never got hold of it until amazon came about my old man was banging on about the 13th Valley for years from when I was a kid. And I wasn't interested as a kid. I wasn't really into all that stuff as a kid. And then three or four years into my military career, he bought me he bought me a brought me a copy and fuck me, what a book. What a book. I gave my copy away and I didn't get it back. So I haven't got a copy of it. <laughs> um Yeah. John Del Vecchio, the thirteenth Valley. Brilliant book. Brilliant book. Anyway. That's it. Look out for the next podcast, which is going to be, oh, I think it's going to be Doug Hook. I think the next one's probably going to be Doug Hook, who's a mate of mine. He's been on the podcast before. He is, uh, funny enough, he's a journalist. He served uh, with me in 3Para, and he is now a journalist, reporter, same thing, isn't it, in Massachusetts. And so I'm going to have a conversation. He's actually, he's actually by chance over in the UK soon as well, but I didn't know that when I asked him if he wanted to come back on. But he's coming back on. He's probably going to record it this week. And uh, we're going to talk about American politics, what's going on in America and all the rest of it. And I think he's quite well connected to Robert Kennedy Jr., the grandson of JFK, who is a, I think, I think he's a senator. Anyway, it's going to be a good conversation. And Doug's an awesome dude. Super intelligent guy. Super articulate. Um, and which is why he's a journalist and reporter. Because he is, uh, he's got the brains to be able to do that. That's it. This is far longer than I expected. 20 minutes talking about... Um, it's supposed to be two minutes doing the prizes. It's not. 20 minutes of me waffling. But you're used to it. Thank you for being patrons. Out. <laughs>